2004, the most pressing concerns for college students were playing soccer, the cheapest, fastest way to get drunk, and hiding guests from the landlords. But in 2018, Sun struggles with his new unwanted house ghost while Dae Young tries to figure out if he should accept a new job offer. Seo Yin manages to insert herself into the middle of everyone's lives, while Ji Woo continues to be a shadow of her former self. Episode 3, Kosher Halal We rewind a little to pick up where food company Exec Sun is coerced into letting Ji Woo's sister Seo Yin live with him until his cousin returns to Korea. Seo Yin claims the guest room, and Sun lays down the line. Literally. He points out an imaginary line that Seo Yin isn't across since Sun likes his privacy and doesn't want her making herself feel at home in his apartment. Meanwhile, Dae Young tosses and turns in his bed as he thinks over Sun's offer to join CQ Foods. He stays up late researching what a food creator does. In the morning, Sun is annoyed to find Seo Yin in the kitchen preparing breakfast. He reminds her that she's not allowed in that part of the apartment, but Seo Yun turns up the charm and insists it's the least she can do since she's staying with him. Then she asks for money to pay for daily expenses to help her track down her missing business partner, but Sun staunchly refuses. He takes a call from Dae Young, who agrees to meet about the job, and Seo Yun overhears the name Gu Dae Young. Sun leaves, and Seo Yun is left alone, and still broke, to clean up the uneaten breakfast but not before taking some cute selfies. Dae Young arrives at Sun's office, and he's a little intimidated by the large building. He's also overwhelmed by all the English business terms that he overhears other workers effortlessly rattle off. Sun escorts him into a meeting with the creative team so Dae Young can get a feel for the office and his potential future colleagues, but poor Dae Young just looks lost with all the buzzwords everyone is throwing around as they argue about focusing on either halal or kosher food. Sun is confident that Dae Young is a good fit for CQ Foods and offers him a consulting contract as a food creator. Dae Young politely declines, saying that he doesn't think he's what Sun is looking for. Sun thinks Dae Young is negotiating a better rate, but Dae Young is sincere, he doesn't belong, and is better suited for insurance. In order to feel more like himself again, Dae Young enjoys a solo lunch of Narain Mayan cold noodle soup. By the time he slurps down the last bit of broth, he's in a better mood, and of course takes photos of the empty bowl to post on his blog. Seo Yun tries to find out if anyone knows where her missing business partner is but isn't having any luck. She hears the door unlock and scrambles to her room so Sun doesn't catch her in the forbidden living room. But it's just the housekeeper, who's surprised to see Seo Yun. Seo Yun craftily tells the housekeeper that her services are no longer needed since Seo Yun has been hired as the new housekeeper. At least Seo Yun actually does clean the apartment, reasoning that this way she can not only be in the rest of the apartment, but Sun will have to pay her for her efforts. As she dusts his desk, she knocks off a few papers, including Dae Young's resume. She realizes that the day young Sun was talking about earlier was actually the Dae Young she used to know back in 2004. Flashback. 20-year-old Dae Young is on his way home from work when he runs into the sisters returning from a movie, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which, to every Potterhead horror, they declare as boring as the book. Dae Young gives Ji Woo a bag of complimentary Benegan's bread since he saw how much she enjoyed it the last time she was there. Ah, yes, the way to a girl's heart is delicious, free bread. They panic when they see the landlord sitting outside, though, since Seo Yun is still living secretly with Ji Woo. Dae Young does his best to distract the nearly deaf landlord, but none of his efforts work. But the nearly deaf landlord can somehow hear the soda cans Seo Yun tosses down the road and the old man runs after the cans to collect them for recycling, allowing the girls to scurry upstairs unseen. Dae Young joins his friends as they eat, drink, and watch TV at his place. Ha, I love that Dae Young has the exact same piggy bank as Park Shin Yang's character in The Lovers in Paris seen the watching right then. Thanks to something Seo Yun said earlier, Dae Young ponders his precious Park Ji Sung signed soccer ball and wonders if they should start a soccer club. Next door, Seo Yun watches TV and Ji Woo cleans up after her, annoyed by all the hair and crumbs Seo Yun leaves behind. Both girls scramble to attention when they hear the landlady knock on the door, wanting to check to see if there's anything wrong since the water bill is much higher than usual. Ji Woo shoves Seo Yun out onto the tiny porch to hide while the landlady looks around for anything suspicious, since she's convinced she heard Ji Woo talking to someone else. 
Ji Woo nervously says it was just the TV, and then awkwardly tries to convince the landlady that the larger cup size bra hanging up to dry is really hers, despite her obviously flat chest. PFFFD. When the landlady opens the door to the tiny porch, Seo Yun isn't there. That's because she climbed to the next door window and into Dae Young's room, where all the boys are standing on their heads, drinking soju from a straw to test the theory that drinking upside down makes you drunk faster. Ha 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 ha. They're shocked to see her crawling in like a ghost, and they tumble to their feet. The landlady barges in, and everyone thinks she's going to confront them about Seo Yun, but instead the landlady just chides them for throwing away perfectly good soju bottles when they should give them to her for recycling. Day Young easily smooths over her concerns about the water bill, promising to pay any difference since she thinks that maybe his friends are the ones using more water. Now that everyone's hanging out in Day Young's room, Jin Seok brags that he's going to show off his flirting skills. He tells Seo Yun that she's like an integral, which is just a nerdy way of complimenting her on her S line. Seo Yun doesn't fall for it and tells him he's full of crap, then stomps out and accidentally steps on Shy and Silent by Young Sam's foot. Ji Woo immediately apologizes for Seo Yun's actions, in sign language. She assumes that since Bai Young Sam never speaks, he must be deaf. Dae Young quickly corrects her, Bai Young Sam can hear and speak just fine, he's just terrified of girls and too afraid to talk in front of them. Sun Ju wonders how Ji Woo and Seo Yun can be sisters when they're the same age. When Ji Woo hesitates in answering, Dae Young quickly covers by lying that they're fraternal twins. That confuses the other boys, since they just celebrated Seo Yun's birthday but not Ji Woo's. Dae Young says that it's because Ji Woo celebrates the lunar birthday so that the sisters can enjoy separate birthdays. The boys buy it, and Ji Woo looks so pleased and thankful for Dae Young stepping in. Dae Young wants to start a soccer club, but none of his fellow engineering students are interested when they hear that there won't be any girls there. Dae Young convinces Ji Woo to join the club, saying that she can be the nurse in case anyone gets hurt, then admits that he's only really asking because no one will agree to join his club unless he can get a girl to join. Ji Woo agrees to help him out. Seo Yun finds it strange that Ji Woo is suddenly interested in soccer when she's never liked it before. She points out that Ji Woo knows nothing about the game, and was even angry when her dramas were cancelled because of the World Cup. Here, here, but when Seo Yun discovers that Dae Young is the one leading the club, she's suddenly interested, too, and becomes the team's mascot. She's not doing it completely for nothing, as Jin Seok agrees to be her errand boy forever provided she becomes a member. Ji Woo's surprised, since Seo Yun doesn't go to their school, she actually attends a nearby university. After a brief conference, the boys decide that the club can be intramural. Seo Yun may be the mascot, but Ji Woo's the one who's cheering her heart out, while Seo Yun poses for selfies, of course. Dae Young tries to rally his inexperienced team, but they're genuinely terrible. Jin Seok is distracted when Seo Yun requests water and he immediately runs off the field in the middle of the game to fetch it for her, which allows the other team to win. Despite losing, they enjoy your team dinner together. The guys stare in a